Barbara, thank you for joining us. This is so much fun. I, you know, there's there's so much going on in the economy right now that's not fun, and you seem to think it's still a great time to start a small business. What are you talking about? I know what I talk about. Uh, now is the single best time to start a business. It's the best time I have seen in the last 20 years. The entire world, entire world, is open to smart new products, new services, and whole new ways of doing things. The needs have changed. During COVID, everybody had the time to sit at home and think what they wanted to do differently. People were forced to do things differently, deliver di goods differently, different kinds of goods. And more, most importantly, people had the time to size up what was important to them. And that is exactly why we have so many more small businesses being started as a result of COVID. It's the absolute best time. What, what sorts of questions do you have to ask yourself if you want to start a small business, like to, to even know if you have any business doing it? Um, you have to ask how much you desire it. There's no replacement in the world for sheer desire, uh, the ambition to get something done. If you don't have that degree of commitment, uh, you won't succeed in building a business. Lots of people have passion on the front gate. That's like uh, falling in love with a girl. Uh, the real uh, commitment happens when you marry her, right? You're going to have to work like crazy to keep your marriage in a good state. Uh, so I think you have to challenge your own commitment. I think you have to ask yourself, too, do you have the traits that every great entrepreneur shares? And in my books, I work with entrepreneurs every day. Uh, in all different kinds of businesses, I find that the traits don't vary much. I find that they have huge enthusiasm and energy. So if you're not a high energy person, I've never seen anyone succeed in business without high energy. Uh, if you aren't good at recovering from disaster, you have no business being a business because in business, it's nothing more than years of overcoming obstacles. And it depends entirely how good you are and how fast you are getting back up and moving on with things. And if you don't have those particular traits, uh, generally people don't succeed in business for themselves. Uh, but uh, many people go into business nonetheless without asking those questions. So I'm happy, Jane, you're asking those questions. <laughs> What sorts of tips do you have for small business owners or, or would be to navigate, you know, inflation and higher wages, higher borrowing costs, whatever mm -hmm. that's going on in this environment right now? Well, you know, every small business is struggling with the same main challenges. Labor costs, of course, number one, the cost of goods rising and as a result, their profits shrinking. And lastly, more recently, the cost of borrowing. I could explain it a little bit better, maybe. Uh, with wages, uh, they're way up simply because it's difficult to hire people. There's not enough people to go around. Um, uh, trade and supply chain disruptions ha uh, have made most small businesses uh, order more bulk of goods because they're afraid of not getting them on time. And what that has led to is a real need to borrow money and the cost of interest rates are rising. So if you really think about it, that's the perfect three-way storm, right? Uh, to be a huge challenge. But I think anybody who's in business has to keep a tight handle on their expenses. Lots of my entrepreneurs don't know what the cost of making that cake was. And they're sending it out and finding three months later, actually the eggs, the milk and everything went up, that they're making no profits even though the sales are going up. I think everyone has to look at their business and uh, actually, uh, ask themselves, what's unnecessary here? What kind of piece of the service is unnecessary? What do customers really not care so much about? And they need to be able to automate what they can to eliminate personnel. And there's lots of little ways you could do that. So I think uh, someone, you know, someone trying to keep their business intact and moving themselves ahead can't get caught up in the fact that their sales are increasing. They have to look below that line and ask themselves, uh, how could I make the bottom line, the profit line, uh, stay whole? Uh, we have some questions from the audience from Andrea. What are some key tips in recruiting great qualified employees? For Andrea and other people who might have the same question, I would say uh, you, you number one, have to offer the three things that everybody wants today. Everybody now has been a little bit spoiled as workers. Everyone wants for, uh, flexible work hours. You've got to give it. Everyone wants competitive pay because if you don't do it, they'll go to the next shop and get it there. And everyone wants help with childcare. And so if you can offer those three things right out of the gate, you're on the right footing.
I think you have to also cast a big enough net. You can't just do what you used to do to get people. You have less people that are going to come in. You get cast a bigger net. You have to post on multiple job sites. Uh, social media is the main platform. And if you even have a shop, a lot of people are overlooking putting a sign in the window. Something, think about how many channels can I get that posting out? And also you have to remember That's that good advice. people are everywhere. I recruit everywhere I go. I don't get a barista handing me a cup of coffee where I'm not thinking, are they better than everybody else serving coffee here? They have the enthusiasm, the energy, are they turning out more cups? I'm recruiting that person. If I'm talking to you on the street, you know you're. I'm interviewing you, even if I don't have the job. So I think you have to really think great people are everywhere. You could pick them off, okay? And then, of course, you have to create a team that people want to be part of. It's the same as building a happy family. Do kids want to be at home and they want to get rid of you? If you have a happy family at work, you're going to have people that will stay with you and be loyal. It's so underestimated. And last, let me not overlook the negative, get rid of your clunkers. I mean, you get one clunker or one negative person in a pool of 10 happy people, they'll suck everybody down and your energy down with it. So you really have to think about uh, how can I build a happy family? And you need happy people to do that. That's great advice. From Barbara, another Barbara, we have a question. We are thinking of hiring independent sales reps to sell our product, but are worried as they are remote and we won't be privy to their sales technique. Is this a smart move? Yeah, well, obviously, you got a smart question from a smart person, another Barbara. <laughs> so <I'm> biased. <laughs> but I would say that, uh, you know, you can manage and monitor your people remotely today through weekly phone calls, check ins. You can play back recorded sales pitches. Uh, and uh, for quality assurance, that's easily done because of all of the technology is out there and affordable to do it. But I'm a believer that hiring your own sales rep, hiring your own anything is always better because you're more assured of a quality individual. You chose them. They're more likely to be parallel to the people that are already in your organization and fit in. Uh, you can also train them as you want. And everybody has a little different style, but those differences make all the difference. And you could each also all along the way involve them and teach them your company culture. That's a big part of a sales pitch, you know, to believe in the company you're working for. Hard to do that when you hire people on the outside. And you should be aware because a result of COVID, and we've all gotten so comfortable with remote sales calling, that most sales calls today are still done remotely in every industry. So one great salesman uh, could call in the whole country, really. He's not limited to a local territory anymore. He could sell across the country. So that's another vote in my book for hiring a sales rep that you totally control and make them your own man or woman. You know, you've talked about the the need for small businesses to use technology to make them feel more intimate, actually, with the customer, which sounds counterintuitive. I heard you say that yeah. before. What kind of, you know, can you just give one tip on what kind of technology you're talking about that a small business person should use? Yeah, there, there are many uh, technologies out there where uh, they will readily stay in touch with your customer, keep them front and forward give them individual personalized messages uh, that makes them feel like they are talking to you. They're not talking to you. Mm -hmm. They're just feeling that contact point of uh, feeling like you're really paying attention to them, want to know what they want. You're surveying them, asking follow up on the order. Did you love it? Would you do it again? That kind of thing. You know, usually in the old days, you needed to be an individual talking to a person to get that kind of feedback. But the technology out there is so, uh, so affordable now to automatically do that for you, provided you spend the time of giving them your personal input on the front side so it sounds intimate. Okay. People don't know the difference. And people really don't care. I think if you said to people, you know, you're talking to a robot here. <laughs> I don't think they'd care as long as the <laughs> robot's telling them the right stuff, you know? Yeah. So there's really no excuse for not getting close to your customer, no excuse for not surveying them, listening intimately to what they say, because all the future goodies are in the, comp in the customer feedback. If you're not close to the customer and listening intently, 
as a secondary piece of this puzzle, you're not going to be able to see what changes you have to make. You can have the most brilliant managers in the largest company in the world. I know when my business got very big, I had brilliant managers and they gave ideas and solutions, but I got my best stuff from my customers because I knew how to listen. And then I had to call them individually. You don't have to do that anymore. There's no excuse to not getting into the shoes of your customer. Uh, my last question, because I know you're big on optimism. Uh, Stephen has asked, "What practical uh -huh. uh, way can can make a, can we make a more positive impact? What practical approach can we make to make a positive impact? How do you keep a positive attitude when times are tough? That never changes, but times do get tougher sometimes than, more than others. Okay, I think uh, to everyone, cut yourself some slack." You know, uh, everybody's looking for the golden answer on staying positive and up 24-7. Uh, just doesn't happen. The pandemic has been very hard on all of us. I'm not recovered from it. Uh, I, I'm feeling optimistic that I'm wondering. But even if it was over, that pandemic shadow hangs on all of us. We're less trustful that things are going to be good, okay? So cut yourself some slack if you're feeling depressed and sad and unmotivated. You can't be that all the time. I think uh, very important where I, what I do is I make sure with a critical eye I'm surrounded with positive people. During COVID, I got rid of a couple of friends. Ooh, I hope they're not watching, of course, okay? But I got rid of a couple <laughs> of friends that kind of took more than they gave. Not that I got greedy, but I'm thinking, hey, you know, why am I being sucked down by these people a little, just a little? I got rid of them, okay? So surround yourself at work and at home and your family with all positive people. You need all the positive stuff you get. And then I think to small businesses, the truth that people always have to remember is that the big guy always has the corner of money, ability to do big things, outspend you, outperform you. But the little guy always has the corner on creativity. I learned when I was building my business that I was super creative when we were young. We had 100 people. Boy, I could have an idea on a Monday, get it out on a Tuesday. But once we had 500 people, it was just not doable. It just was everything took too long through committees, legal vetting, accountants, da, 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 da. But what I realized very, very early was that when you're a little guy, you can run faster and beat the big guy at his game faster, and you could steal his market share through your creativity. So you can't forget that when your business is young and struggling. You've got the advantage on the big guy. I really believe that. All right. And then last, of course, always the truth is the bad times are the best times to move ahead. They always were for me. I always moved ahead a little, but when there were bad times, you could take a surge. You could gobble up somebody else's territory. And you can't do that without everything changing. So when you're in a period of change, which we are in now, getting back to your first question, is now the great time to start your business? Of course, everything's changing. Everything's shaking up. The checkerboard is all in the wrong place. So it's the best time to move ahead. Right now is the best time to move ahead. Oh, my gosh. I got to go start a small business. Barbara Corcoran, thank you so much. This was great <laughs> advice and very inspirational. We really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Really nice hanging out with you, Jane. You bet.